The Blue Jackets lost another game last night in an extremely unsurprising way, so we're going to talk about that. And we've got more yelling to do about ice time uh, deployments. So we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about Johnny Gaudreau. We're going to talk about goaltending. All of this and more on today's Locked on Blue Jackets. Your Locked on Blue Jackets, your daily podcast on the Columbus Blue Jackets, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome to Locked On Blue Jackets, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I am, as always, your host, Jay Foster, here to bring you news, stories, uh, yelling. That's going to be the basis of today's episode, I think. Uh, trials, tribulations, joys, successes, uh, injury news. Uh, we're going to talk about that as well today. Uh, all of that and more about your favorite team and mine, the Columbus Blue Jackets. Before we get started, I want to thank everyone for making this your first listen of the day every day. Lots of Blue Jackets continues to be free and available on all podcast platforms. We're also over on YouTube. If you haven't hit subscribe over there, then uh, please feel free to do so. It helps me out. It helps you out. You get notified whenever when episodes go live and everybody wins when you hit subscribe, basically. Um, except for the Blue Jackets. The Blue Jackets do not like to win. So we're going to talk about that. Um, in fact, let's just get right into that. The Blue Jackets lose um, in a game that they were sort of in and sort of not in. It was a weird game. Um, Elvis Muslikens was... well. They, they, okay, so they lost 6-3. Um, but I don't think it was as uneven as that score suggests. Um, early 2-0 lead for Tampa Bay. And then... Blue Jackets get one back with Gavin Beirutha, who I guess has just decided that he scores goals now. Didn't have a single goal with the first two seasons he was with the Blue Jackets, and now he's got two in like four games. Um, technically three in four games. One of them got called back for offsides, though, which I think is rude. Um, because I think if you challenge a guy that, well, A, you're winning. Um, and B, if you challenge the goal of someone who doesn't score very often, that seems mean. Um, I am obviously joking, but that does seem, <laughs> it seems unfair. Like, hey, this guy scores like one goal a season. Let's take it away from him. But um, I don't know. I'm working on a theory that he's kind of been possessed by the spirit of Zach Wierenski, which is that's what's getting me through the the season is thinking about things like that. Um, so it's 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 two one, Tampa. They make it three one. They make it four one. Um, Blue Jay can make it four two. Tim Burney, first NHL goal. Super exciting. We're going to talk about that in a minute. Um, and Kirill Marchenko gets one right at the very end to make it six. Three, that's the final score. Um, uh, the the Lightning had like three players on hat trick watch, which was very stressful for me. But it was like I said, it was it was a weird game. Um, Blue Jackets were god awful in the first period, um, which seems to be a bit of a theme these days. Um, they got outshot like seventeen to five or nineteen to six or something stupid like that. Um, Elvis made two uh, made. 17 saves in the first period, um, which is, it's just, I don't know, Elvis was good in this game, um, and I tw I almost tweeted that after the fourth goal that he allowed, which, I mean, and the, the, the special teams are something we're going to talk about as well, but if you're going to allow three power play goals on four power plays, like, that feels like it's not a goaltender issue. Um, Elvis was really good last game. I liked him a lot this game. I know he allowed six goals. I know that that's not the kind of number that you want your starting goaltender to be allowing, but... Although I don't know that Elvis is the starting goaltender right now. I guess it is Corpsalo. He went home to be with the birth of to be there for the birth of his first child, which is very exciting. Congratulations to him. My point is, I don't think Elvis can be blamed for that loss. However, they've reached kind of a point in this season where there is no such thing as like a moral loss. You know, like, okay, they played well against Washington and lost one nothing. They played fine against Tampa and then lost 6-3, you know? Like, even if they're doing things right, it's kind of getting to a point where I'm like, okay, cool. Like, sure, it's 40 games into the season and you figured this out. Like, I don't know, it's, it's, it's frustrating to watch because if this was a season where, you know, this kind of loss was out of the ordinary or, you know, like, if they're a good team that loses to another good team. Like, I don't have a problem with that. If you're a bad team losing to a good team, I don't really have a problem with it necessarily. They're getting to a point where they're playing well against good teams and losing anyway. And 
I don't know. It's just it feels very much like a well, we're doing we're doing the right things. We just didn't get the win, and I'm like, okay, but then clearly you're not doing enough right things. Um, and I'm usually a big fan of like taking a moral victory, but I don't know. After so many moral victories, moral losses, bad victories, good losses, whatever, like I'm just I'm just frustrated and I'm tired, and it doesn't help that Brad Larson is playing. I don't know four-dimensional chess with the the lines um which we're gonna talk about in a minute because i need to do some more yelling about what brad larson's doing with the forwards so we'll do that in just a minute but to just kind of wrap up my thoughts about this game is in any other season i'll be like yeah fine they lost to they lost to the lightning the lightning is a very good team like they they put up some semblance of a fight the goaltending was not god awful um you know, good to see Bayer get another goal. Good to see Bernie get a goal. Good to see Kirill Marchenko. Uh, he was nine goals in 17 games now, um, which is, you know, near enough a 40 goal pace, which is very exciting. And I hope that he keeps it up because he's one of the, he, he's been a real bright spot in kind of the dark parts of this season. Um, and there have been many dark parts, but Kirill Marchenko was a real, a real bright spot. Um, I just, wish we get, I just wish he would get more ice time, which is what we're going to talk about next here on Locked on Blue Jackets. But first, I've got to tell you about Bet Online. Because it's your number one source for sports betting information, stats, news, and analysis. You can get the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there. From pro football, to basketball, to soccer, to the NHL, to uh, the baseball is coming back soon. You can bet on all of that at betonline.net. And if you love sports podcasts, you can find those at betonline as well. And if you do listening to Locked on Blue Jackets, I'm going to assume that you do love a sports podcast. They are the fastest and easiest way to get all of your betting information. So if you want to put some money on, I don't know, Johnny Gaudreau stabbing Brad Larson with an ice pick, if he gets another 15-minute ice time game, uh, then you can do that about online.net. You can't do that about online.net, but it would be cool if you could. Head to the website today. Once again, that is betonline.net. Use your laptop or your mobile device to learn more about the trends and action. Because bet online is where the game starts. So let's talk ice time um, because I was kind of keeping an eye on, you know, the young guys and what their ice time is doing, especially, you know, guys like Karol Marchenko, who has four goals in his last two games. And uh, he is sitting on, he played 13-13 in all situations last night. He had the third lowest ice time. The only players that played Fewer minutes than him with Cole Sillinger at 12.49, which for some reason Brad's decided he doesn't like Cole Sillinger. It's fine. We don't have to get into that. Um, and then Carson Meyer, who left with an injury. So, Kirill Marchenko, four goals in his last two games. In his last three games, excuse me. Um, 17 shot attempts for 15 against while he's on the ice. And he's playing 13 minutes. On the flip side, Jack Rosselbeck was on the ice for 14 shot attempts, 4 and 25 against, 17-16. What are we doing here? And then, like, that's not even the most egregious. So here is a list of forwards that played more ice time than Johnny Gaudreau, your nine and a three-quarter million dollar star player. Johnny Gaudreau played 14-34 in all situations. Sean Corrali played more than him. Emil Bemstrom played more than him. Liam Foody played more minutes than Johnny Gaudreau last night. Like, how do we not see that this is a problem yet? Like, I don't, I don't get it. Um, Jack Rosovic played more. Patrick Lane played more. Gus Nyquist led all forwards in ice time. Um, that line, that that Nyquist Rosovic line, a line, um, apparently gets a bigger leash than Gaudreau, Johnson, and Bemstrom. Like, sure. Um, of the the lines that were that had positive Corsi four percentages. Gaudreau, Johnson, Bemstrom at 52.4. And uh, Foodie, Corrali, and Olivier also clocked in as uh, positives at fifty at 55.56. The Gustav Nyquist, uh, Jack Rostovic, Patrick Line line came in at 40%, and they had the most ice time. So the two, t- the two lines that had the most ice time, the Rostovic line, the Corrali line. Now, in fairness to the Corrali line, they they played well. They had fifty up. They had fifty five point five six. The line that had the most, the best line, Marchenko, Sillinger, and Bemstrom had a Corsi four percentage of eighty four percent. 
They played four minutes total. And they had 11 shot attempts for and two against. I just, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I keep looking at this and hoping that it's going to make sense. It just, it doesn't. And they finally got asked about it. Um, I believe Brian Hedger asked Fred Larson, what the heck's going on with Johnny Gaudreau's ice time? And I'm just going to pull that quote up because it's just, it's the most word salad quote that I've heard in a long time. So CBJ coach Brad Larson on Gaudreau's season low, 1435 ice time. It's not his center. There's better in him. He's wearing an A. He's a leader. It doesn't matter who you're playing with. We're missing 10 NHL guys. So whoever's on the ice, you've got to give it. I don't understand. So is his argument like Johnny Gaudreau needs to be better? So he's giving him less ice time, which A, dub, because Johnny Gaudreau is and continues to be one of the best players on this team. Some nights he is the only good player on this team. So you're not going to win by playing Johnny Gaudreau less. Even if Johnny Gaudreau on an off night is still better than 60% of this roster. Like, that's just how it is. Johnny Gaudreau on maybe his worst night is still better than giving Matthew Olivier more ice time. He didn't get more ice time in this game, but there have been games where Matthew Olivier has had like 18 minutes of ice time. Like, I don't, I don't get it. Like, Liam Foodie, who I like Liam Foodie. I don't think he's panning out to be the player that they thought, that they thought he was going to be. Liam Foodie has zero NHL goals ever. Um, he's getting three minutes, uh, two minutes more ice time than Johnny Gaudreau, who's making nine and three quarter million and is one of the top 10 players in the NHL. It doesn't make sense. You have to, I, I don't understand how you make this make sense. And I know that this is basically a carbon copy of the complaint that I did on Monday about Ken Johnson, Kirill Marchenko. In a vacuum, I can understand where you want to limit those guys in terms of, well, they're young, they are, you know, quote unquote, untested, they haven't earned it or whatever bullcrap meaning that they they ascribe to earning ice time nowadays. Like, at what point does Johnny Gaudreau, like, how has he not earned the benefit of the doubt here? And even if he was playing badly last night, which he wasn't, okay, sure, he was only, he was above... He was above 50% in Corsi 4 percentage, um, which, I mean, on this team is not a given. So he's one of the the players that is po- has a positive differential. Um, he's one of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven players had a positive Corsi differential that night, uh, last night. Johnny Gaudreau was third on the team. Uh, the only guys that did better than him, Emil Bemstrom and Adam Boquist. Uh, and I'm sure you'll be shocked to hear that Adam Boquist was... Uh, he had the second lowest ice time in defense because what are we doing here? Um, I'm going to, I don't know. I'm going to lose my mind. Erica Branson led this team in ice time uh, and was a, and had 30% course before. He had 13 shot attempts for and 29 again. So we can't get into that now. We're talking about Johnny Gaudreau. I don't necessarily think that this on its own is a fireable issue. This should be a worry for Yama Kekalainen. Because he's just, he has not necessarily put his neck on the line here. He's just handed out, like, the biggest contract in Blue Jacket history to Johnny Cadreau. And he's playing less than a third of the game. You want a guy like Johnny Cadreau, like, and I, 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 there's arguments for, you know, you should limit your ice time. And I, I don't think, I genuinely don't think any forward should be playing more than about 22 minutes. I don't think any player should be playing more than about 22 minutes, if I'm being honest. Um, but that aside... How are you going to pay that much money and then watch someone else not use the person that you've paid that much money for? It, b- baffling. It makes no sense to me. It makes no sense. And this is going to be a conversation that we're going to come back to again and again and again this season. I can tell. I've already had this conversation like 17 times this season and I'm tired of it. Um, we have to talk about something else. We have to move on because otherwise this will just be another eight to 10 minutes of me yelling about Brad Larson. Um, we're going to talk about injury news next because the blue jackets have lost another two players to injury and it just keeps on going so we're going to talk about that in just a minute on locked on blue jackets the injury bug is everywhere well it's mostly in columbus um the first one was kind of weird vladislav gavrikov so he took part in morning skate he skated on the top line um and then like maybe three hours before game time they were like yeah he's out with an upper body um, which he took a hit from Tom Wilson in the game on um, 
Sunday night, the the Washington game. Uh, left the bench for a little bit, came back. He was doing something with his hand. Um, so I assume that that's what the the injury is. He took a knock from Tom Wilson, which death taxes Tom Wilson injuring Blue Jackets players. It's uh, eternal. Um, that's, that's beside the point. I'm not going to get into that. So that's my assumption is that he's, I don't think he's, I, I don't know whether it's broken. I, I would suspect not um, because they probably would figure that out and be like, yeah, he's out for a while. So I wonder if it's just bruising or just soreness or he can't hold a stick or it's, it's I don't know. Gavrikov missing um, after taking place in morning skate and apparently being fine three hours before the game. And they're like, no, he's not fine. So Boquist goes back in, um, plays well. So I'm sure we'll hear all of the the conversation about how Boquist needs to learn to defend, despite the fact that uh, he was that's what he was doing. But that's I don't know. Again, we don't have time to get to that. At some point, I will do an episode on why everyone hates Adam Boquist. Um, then in the game, Carson Meyer um, leaves the bench, and I don't remember seeing what happened to him. Like I don't remember seeing him get hit or like taking a knock or falling funny or anything like that. He just leaves the bench. Um, and then they're like, well, he's not coming back. I think it was so, uh, partway through the second. Um, Maya leaves the bench. And then at the start of the third, they're like, well, he's not coming back. He's done for the night. Upper body injury. So there goes another two players. Um, with Gavrikov's injury, um, the Blue Jackets are down to two players that have played every game so far this season. They've got Johnny Gaudreau and Gus Nyquist. I'm, I am going to go ahead and knock on wood here because jinxes aren't real, but I can use my superpowers for evil only. So those are the only two guys that have managed to stay healthy all season. Um, and, you know, some guys, they've only missed a game here or there. I think Gabranton missed, like, two games. Or um, Ken Johnson was healthy scratched for, like, four games and missed one due to injury. Cole Sillinger missed a couple of games due to injury. Like, still, if you only have two guys, and I think last season the Blue Jackets only had two guys that played all 82 games, and it was Andrew Peake and Gus Nyquist. Um, you know, and, and Andrew Peak he missed a game because he was healthy scratched. So, like, technically, he hasn't missed a game due to injury. But, you know, and then you, you bring in the illnesses. I think, you know, a couple of guys have had COVID this season, and there's been other illnesses. There was a bug going around. And I just, I don't know. At what point do we, like, stage some kind of coup on the ghosts that live in Nationwide that are clearly haunting these players? Um, because I don't know who it is. I don't know what's happening. We need to like smudge the entire arena with Sage. Just injury after injury after injury, and it doesn't stop. And yes, some of these guys getting injured and missing time are depth players, but you have to replace them with depth players. And, you know, if Gavrikov is out for any length of time, I don't know, man. Like, presumably Nick Blankenberg is going to be back soon. I hope. I miss Nick Blankenberg. I'm excited to see him come back. Maybe next game. We can only hope. But... If Gavrikov misses any length of time, like there goes your number one defenseman for the season. Um, you know, after after Wierenski went down, it's been Gavrikov as the number one defenseman, and then after that, like in my mind, your next the next one up for number one defenseman should probably be Bjork or Boquist. They've both been the best defenseman in my in my mind. But what's going to happen is we're going to have Andrew Peak and Gabranson playing 25, 26 minutes a night. So hopefully. It's just a small knock for Gavrikov. He misses a couple of games and then comes back because I don't know that this... That he, he, has he had a great season? Maybe not. But he is kind of a load-bearing defenseman for this team right now. Um, and I don't think the Monsters can survive losing any more defensemen either. You know, they just got Jake Christensen back. But that's kind of... That's kind of where we're at, is... At this point, my hope for games is that they don't get embarrassed, which, in fairness, I don't think they were embarrassed against the Tampa. Like, the Tampa Bay Lightning is a good team. They showed fight. Some players, so individual players, played very well. Um, it was a, a decent game for, for Muslikins. I know he didn't get the the win, and I know he allowed six goals. But considering the rest of the season for goaltending, like I'm willing to chalk this up as acceptable in terms of goaltending. Unacceptable to the team in front of him that they allowed 17 shots in the first period. But credit to Elvis. I thought Elvis was fine last night. Um, I'm just, yeah, it's, I'm kind of running out of things to say about the luck of this team, but maybe I'll just go and look at some Conor Bedard highlights until I feel better. Um, uh, but that's going to that's gonna do it for me today. Uh, that's all I've got time for. Thank you for listening. Tomorrow, we're going to preview the game against the Hurricanes because for some reason, all of the Hurricanes, like, so we played the Washington Capitals twice last week, and now they're playing the Hurricanes again after playing them on Saturday. Like, uh, I don't know. It'll be fine. It'll be fine.
It will be fine. They beat them last time. I'm looking for another Kirill Marchenko hat trick. That's what I would like out of this game. We're going to preview that game um, tomorrow here on Locked on Blue Jackets. You can find Locked on Blue Jackets wherever you get your podcasts. You can find us on YouTube. Please hit subscribe over there. It helps me out. It helps you out. Everybody wins. You can find me on Twitter at underscore Jacob Foster, J-A-K-O-B-F-O-R-S-T-E-R. You can find the podcast at L-O underscore Blue Jackets. If you have comments, questions, criticisms, you can email me at LockedOnBlueJackets at gmail.com. And until tomorrow, make sure you stay locked on.